Since being a car cleaner, I've made many positive purchases, but I've also made many terrible ones. So in today's video, I want to be covering my top 10 products that I regret buying since being a car cleaner. So I'm making this video because there was a time in my life when I kept going on the internet thinking, what else do I need to be a car cleaner? What have I got to get? And I kept getting addicted to YouTube, and I suppose some of you probably watching this right now are going to have exactly the same experience. You see other people using things, and you think, I've got to get it, I've got to up my game, I've got to buy every single bit of equipment. And then you get to the point where you buy it, you spend a lot of money on it, and then it just sits there in your van or in your shed, and you're just like, why? Why did I buy that? So I'm hoping today's video is going to solve a lot of those issues for you, if you're looking at buying things, and it will help you decide whether you really need them or not. So let's kick it off with number one. In at number one, it's fake Will Willies. Yes, we've all been there. We've all been on AliExpress where we've seen these wonderful wheel brushes. They look brilliant on the website. And you're thinking, I've got to get myself some of them. They look too good to be true. Well, let me tell you this. They are too good to be true. And I remember it was one of my first or second videos I ever made where I started using these brushes and I was really excited about it. Christ. I was like really chuffed because I got three brushes for like 10, 15 quid, I can't remember now. It was peanuts anyway. I had to wait six weeks from I think to come in the post. Then when they did arrive, I was like, yay, it's fantastic, it's really good. And then I got them, I used them once and I was like, yeah, these, these could be a real bargain. These could be the real deal. They've saved me so much money. And in a day later, it's like having a dead rat on a stick. They were completely gone. They were hopeless and I didn't even leave them in the buckets either. They were left to dry and they literally disintegrated. They were glued on, like the fluffy bits were just glued on to this stick. And then I was cleaning a wheel one day, and it just comes straight off the stick. I pulled it out, and I just had a stick in my hand. I looked like a right bell end. And that was just one of the biggest regrets. I think buying them, I always sort of got addicted to trying to find a cheap alternative to wheel willies. There isn't. Just go for the real thing. Seriously, you'll know what I mean once you've got them. In at number two, it's the Halfords Wheel Brush. Yes, these look very tempting because they look like fake EZ brushes. And I've bought many of these in the past, and I know that you can get loads of other companies that sell very similar ones. But the ones I'm focusing on today are the Halfords ones, the Auto Express ones that were awarded the best of 2020. Flipping heck. How long did they test them for? Five minutes? Probably because after I used them, it took about a week of using it. It started off really well. I was like, yeah, these... These could be really good as well. I was getting a bit of kickback when you're putting the brushes into the wheels. But after a while, things started to go wrong. I first lost the tip off them. That's the first thing to go. Once that's gone, everything else starts getting rusty. And within a few weeks, it deteriorates. The handle snaps. And then you're even holding the brush because you've got no handle. Because the handle was completely rusted off. They're a complete waste of money. They are not worth your time. If you're going to be cleaning cars all the time on a regular basis, this is not the tool for you. Granted, if you're gonna be doing your own cars and you might be thinking about using it once a month, you might get away with it, but I'm saying for a car valeter, for a cleaner who's doing this for a living, absolutely no chance. I've bought so many and at that point I had to stop. Just go for the proper EZ wheel brushes. If you wanna get some decent ones, go for them. In at number three, it's the Air Cannon. Now this is something that a lot of people do love using and I'm one of them. I think they are brilliant tools. But I got myself a cheap one off eBay, it was about 15 quid, and again it come from the other side of the world, so I did have to wait a fair few weeks to get it. But once I got it, I realised that there was one major problem. If I wanted to start offering it as a service, I'd have to carry around a massive air compressor because you need something with enough power to do the job properly. So I thought, oh, I'll get an air compressor, that would be a great idea. I carry this big heavy thing, which weighs about the same as a 747 by the way, you put it in your van, and you're like, oh God, now I've got another issue. I've got more weight. More weight means I need to have more fuel. More fuel means it's going to cost me more money. If I'm not offering this service enough and I'm not getting enough money, this is going to be a complete waste of time and it's going to be a complete waste of money. I have to constantly get the work in to pay for it. It just didn't work. Now, I'm not going to say they're not great tools because they are brilliant. If you've got one and you've got a workshop and you've got an air compressor and you're not going out and about, I understand it. I do think they are amazing tools and they can be better than a carpet extractor sometimes. But for me, it just seemed a bit pointless. I wasn't getting enough of the work in. So that's another thing that I really do think you should avoid unless you've got the proper facilities to cope with it. In at number four, it is buying bulk buys and machine polishing pads like these right here. Now, these are ones you can get from eBay, you can get from AliExpress. You see them literally 
everywhere plastered over the internet you've got like a pack of 5,000 machine sponges and you're like that's a good deal five quid for a load of them you buy them they are complete hopeless they're not good what you will find is when you buy the cheap ones like your machine polishing away and trust me i've made this mistake many times because there's been many times where i've had no money in my life and i've had to make do i've bought them i've been machine polishing away and it literally just goes whoop, and flies off where it's just come unstuck they are really bad even when you wash them out in like a bucket to clean them out afterwards they just lose their stickiness and they peel away they're not very good and then what you will find is after you've even washed them once they literally disintegrate it's like the sponge can't even cope with a little bit of water they're completely knackered so you end up chucking them out and then what you do find is you have a whole load of them in your van and they're just sitting there they're just taking up unnecessary space or in your workshop or whatever they're not very good just if you're going to be doing proper detailing there's no point in cheaping out because you want to be doing a proper job clients are not going to be happy believe me there is a big difference between buying cheap foam pads from china and using the proper ones that are made from proper reputable companies it's just a massive difference it's night and day so again i hate to say it but please just avoid the cheap pads because you're going to be wasting your money in at number five the next thing i regret purchasing is one of these cheap and nasty handheld portable pressure washers you think you with every intention they're going to be the best thing you've ever bought unfortunately it doesn't work like that they are completely hopeless now i used to buy this yellow one i won't say the brand because i don't want to get sued to high heaven but it was bright yellow anyway i think you know I spent about 40 quid on it when I first started out. I was like, do I get a good machine or do I just go cheap and try and work my way up? Nah, it worked about like three times and I gave up on it. I could have peed more power than it. It was just so weak and pathetic. And you can't buy bigger hoses because it's going to reduce the power. It's not going to work. It's going to strain the motor. It's going to kill it out in seconds. It's just not going to work full stop. It's not going to be practical for anybody starting out. If you do want to see how proper pressure washers work, do check out our playlist. We have a whole massive playlist of pressure washer reviews. Go check them out. And also while you're here, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe. In at number six is buying paint touch-up sticks. This is something I sort of did in advance. I was always like, yes, why don't I just go buy loads in bulk, keep it in the van, and then I've got it for a rainy day or when I need it. It turns out nobody ever wants their chips sorted. If they do, they just get their cars resprayed. And this was one of the mistakes I made. I think I spunked about 100 quid on loads of different colours, thinking, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have these all here. I can offer this service. Then if I turn up randomly, someone's going to want to get it fixed. And I asked everybody, every time I got to a job, do you need any chips sorted out? Every single person said no. Like, they literally didn't care about it that much. So I thought, well, that's one thing I really have to just completely cut off my list altogether because people just weren't asking for it. So I think the moral of the story is this. Always check in advance if a client wants any chips sorted out. If they're booking on the phone for the first ever time, say to them, have you got any chips? Yes. What's the colour of your paint? they give you the colour and then order it separately. Don't go buying in advance. I think you're going to be chucking money down the drain, which could be better invested in pressure washers or electrical equipment or other chemicals like that. There's plenty of other things I think you should be spending your money on, but paint sticks is just not one of them. In at number seven, it is the Will Wash Noodle. Yes, that is a mouthful and this isn't a dig at more Will brushes today, but this is a Halfords one that I purchased and I did a few videos on it and I was really happy and I did give it a lot of praise when it first came out and I started using it i was pleased about the way i could clean the bigger wheels but when i was trying to jam it into those tighter spoked wheels i was literally just destroying it so it could have been a user error because i was using it quite a lot but then it got to the point where it's just like why am i even using this in the first place because it was a it was a stick with a sponge around it and then it had a wash noodle so it wasn't going to be able to do any sort of aggressive wheel cleaning it was just going to be for your general maintenance and considering they're going to cost you about sort of 12 to 15 pounds you are going to get through quite a lot in a year if you're going to be doing this for a business so just bear that in mind if you've got big chunky wheels it's okay but for me nah it just wasn't good enough the next one on the list is the portable steam cleaner now i've got nothing against steam cleaners in general i've got one myself and i think it is a brilliant thing to have but when you've got one of those little £25 ones, and I've been there and done it so many times, they're so tiny, you can take like a little bit of water and that's it. You have to wait a fair few minutes for it to fill up. So that's going to take a little bit of time out of your cleaning schedule. Then you get the thing going. Then you're trying to use it with this little handle. 
you can clean it for a certain amount of time but then a few minutes later it's completely gone and you can't just refill it because you have to wait for it to cool down if you take the lid off it will just go pop and you'll incur a massive injury and that's the last thing you need so unlike the Karcher SC4 where you can constantly fill it up it's just not practical enough and then I was thinking well look I'm trying to do sterilizing for cars here by the time you even sterilize the steering wheel you could have just sprayed it with an antibacterial cleaner and you would have been better off because you would have just got it done in seconds and I think time is money so those little steamers although they're 25 quid and you're like yeah I should just get anything to get started so I can offer that service I wouldn't bother offering that service I'll just do an antibacterial clean there's plenty of antibacterial cleaners out there on the market that are infused with interior detailers and things there's so many out there to choose from I just don't see the point in it. So I've got two left and the last one is going to be a bit controversial because there's going to be a lot of you who are going to say I completely disagree with you but that's fair enough that's why I make this channel I love a bit of drama so I'm going to save that till the very end but the next on the list is car air fresheners and I want to explain a bit here I used to spend about 500 to a thousand pound a year buying massive bulk buys of car air fresheners I used to think yes I'm going to get my logo on with my phone number it's going to make a massive bit of difference no it won't we got the odd compliment of people going oh that's nice at least we got the phone number now we can call it yeah you got your mobile phone you can still call me on that it just seemed like a bit of a waste of money and they didn't really smell that great either the majority of those little tree air fresheners smell like a Weatherspoon's toilet they don't even smell that nice so I rarely got any compliments out of it and it just didn't seem worth it in the end and in fact it made more sense just to go out and buy a one pound can of Febreze or whatever just spray it and at least you can mix it up if a client says oh I don't like the smell of that then you just spray it with something different and I did used to waste so much money people used to go I don't like those air fresheners they give me headaches they're probably covered in weed killer or something for all I know I don't even know what they're covered in but it just seemed like such a good idea at the time where I was like yeah I'm gonna put my logo on it you've got business cards you've got your van but more importantly you've got your personality and your skills people aren't gonna use you again even if you chuck in a good air freshener if you're no good if you're brilliant at cleaning a car and you haven't put an air freshener in you're still going to get the client so don't waste extra time and don't waste extra money unless you've got it to burn of course so we're moving on to the final one that I regret buying and that is the car dryer now I get it if you are a detailer you're cleaning say one car a week or you're doing one car a day I understand the logic in buying one because you don't want to be doing a touch dry system you want to do touchless you want to minimalize any scratching that you can get on a car I totally get it I understand that better than anyone but if you're a mobile car valeter or you're someone who's got a unit where you're constantly plowing through cars they slow you down honestly I tried so many different variations and methods of speeding up the process of using one for a mobile car cleaner it's just not practical you you don't make the same sort of money that you get as a detailer if you're doing detailing you'll be like right I've got a car in for five days this is going to be 1500 quid or two grand or whatever it's fine you've got all the time in the world it's going to be a doddle doing that it's a piece of cake but when you're doing mobile car cleaning it's completely different the whole idea of making money you have to be in and out in a short time just to get by just doing this business it's so different the whole business DNA from detailing is completely different to valeting and that's where the car dryer just simply does not work for mobile car cleaners I'm sorry it just doesn't but please don't think I'm anti car dryers they do have their place within mobile car valeters businesses they're great for blowing down all the nooks and crannies when it comes to getting things out where the hoover can't reach and also when it comes to drying the engine bays after a clean they're also pretty good at that too especially where there's lots of intricate delicate electrical areas that really shouldn't be getting wet those car dryers do come in handy for moments like that so these are just a couple to name a few there have been many more which I might even save for another video but I don't want you to think they're all a complete waste of time I'm just saying from my own personal experience like the car dryer for example there is so many positive things I love about it but just for my business and the way that I'm doing things it just didn't work so you have to think about what's going to work for you it's not necessarily one shoe fits all for everybody in detailing You've got different pressure washers that are great for different scenarios there's so many different things that you need to consider if you've got a small vehicle you can't go and buy a massive pressure washer with a huge trolley it just doesn't work like that so you've got to think about what works for you and if it doesn't work for you then maybe just take a step back do a little bit more research before you start jumping in and making unnecessary purchases as for me I'm getting back out there finally we've had no good weather this week but I'm getting back out and we've got another video coming very soon I'll see you later bye bye